Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about grades. So a subscriber asks, hi Dimitri, maybe this is something you've already heard several times, but what's the weight of a good grade in the bachelor masters in deciding to hire someone or not? Um, so again, it depends here. Let's, let's think about how grades just play into your quant career as a whole here. Um, so you go from high school to undergrad, you need decent grades and grades are a critical aspect along with your SAT or ACT scores. Uh, to get into an undergrad. Then in undergrad, you have to pick a major at a university that you chose to go to, and you need to get good grades here. Uh, when you go on, now the goal of quant finance here is we don't hire bachelors. At least I don't. Most people don't. Um, I'm not going to get into that rabbit hole too much. Uh, but again, when you go from a bachelor's to a master's, what is a master's looking for? A master's is going to look at, one, where you went to school at, uh, two, what are your grades? And three, your exam scores, as well as letters of recommendation uh, or statement of purpose, which is kind of the fourth part here. So in an undergrad, you need to do well in your courses and have a decent GPA because that's going to determine your master's program. So that's where grades is going to play into be a big part of this. Um, now, when you get into a master's or PhD program uh, and you go to work in the industry, I don't care about grades seems kind of odd for a lot of people, but I'll explain why here. Um, I look at the school where you went to, and I do a lot of interviewing around random questions, things that I think that are nuanced. Um, I make people think in interviews as well. So I want them to run down rabbit holes of weird ideas and building models and broken assumptions. And I want them to kind of express who they are for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, I want to see what you do and don't know. And I'm going to tell you, I have never, ever, ever had anybody pass an interview 100%. So it's just what it is. Um, but that gives me an idea of where your strengths and weaknesses are. Um, the second piece is the hardest part of quants is you might be the world's smartest person, but you can't explain your ideas here. So I make people explain these interviews because if you can explain it to me, um, I can work with you. Right. And if you're really good at explaining it and you come off as an all star at explaining it, you'll be really good at doing it with the businesses. But again, depending how firms are structured here, as long as you can communicate well with the manager, uh, managers have time and experience and can easily communicate with the other departments. Now, how does grades come into this? When I hire, I don't care about grades because I assume if you got into school ABC, whatever school that is, your master's program or your PhD program, and it is a good program, um, you must have had good grades and you must have done well in school to get into that program. Uh, the problem with masters and PhDs is typically a B minus is the lowest grade that these programs will give out because anything less than a B minus is considered a fail. That's how grad school works. Um, now, I'm not going to go into the business side. It's MBAs do this with distributions and other nonsensical stuff. Um, I look at, I read forms on different quant programs, masters, PhDs. If I don't know of a specific program, sometimes I will reach out to friends who have gone there or know someone there and get a perspective on that. Um, but your GPA doesn't really mean that much because again, if you had like a 395 out of four and you had like a 396, what's the difference? St statistically, there's probably not much of a difference between the two candidates and the two students here. Uh, now, a 395 from a crappy school and a 395 from a great school is vastly different here. But again, when you're in a grad program, I assume that, you know, these universities have already done all the weeding out for me. I don't need to worry about that so much. I just know it's a good program. And so as long as you did decently well, that's fine. Now, the other thing I look at, which impacts, I guess, GPA in a way, is I look at to see what courses students have taken. And I am vastly concerned when I see those with high GPAs and master's programs because often they take the really easy classes like the business classes instead of taking the really hard and challenging math, stats, and computer science classes. So again, if I was to weed off of GPA, I'm gonna throw out the best, the brightest students, and I'm going to get the easy people who don't wanna work that hard. Um, so that's why I don't like GPA. I just don't think it's a really good metric um, to compare students across schools, which is challenging to do. So again, the school reputation and brand is worth far more than the GPA. Uh, also, GPA is very misleading in the sense that you can just take a bunch of easy, crappy classes, and it also skews your GPA. So from a quant perspective, I assume you've done the work in high school, you've done the work in undergrad to get to a top-notch uh, master's or PhD program, uh, and you've done fairly well. And so I don't look at it. Some employers do look at it. If you're going to I don't know, he and ha over it. Uh, I would say a three, five and above is good. Above a three, 
you're doing okay. You're hanging in there. Um, I, if your GPA was like some sort of metric, I would probably never hire anyone less than a three. But that being said, um, again, higher is better. Again, it depends which courses you take. It depends if it's a master's degree because you have a B minus as the minimum floor. And so these things kind of factor in here. Uh, if you had like above a three, five, you know, you should be pretty decent. I don't think people are going to be splitting hairs too much. Uh, if it's a business type job, like an investment banking job, which is not quant, uh, they care about GPA. It's like this big fancy thing. And they look to see what school you went to. And then, you know, oh, you were the 4.0 smartest kid in your class. And it's this really big deal. Uh, I have not found this to be the case in quant finance. Often we're more concerned with like, oh, what courses did you take? Did you write any papers? Um, if you're experienced, you know, where have you worked? What models have you worked on? What issues have you faced? Those sorts of things. Uh, quants are just more deep mentally, I think, uh, than GPA. So we don't look at it too much. Again, there are going to be firms that do care about it. So it's not all quant funds. Uh, those that are more competitive might use it as an easier tool to kind of weed and sort resumes. Um, it's just lazy recruiting in my opinion. But anyways, that's kind of my take on it. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time. <laughs>